Good morning, everybody. I'm Broward County Commissioner Stacy Ritter here with another edition of Coffee with Stacy. In our continuing attempt to educate Broward residents about what's going on here in Broward County that you may not have read about, um, we've taken the show again on the road and we are at the Greater Fort Lauderdale Convention and Visitors Bureau this morning in downtown Fort Lauderdale and I am here with the president of the CVB, Nikki Grossman. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for thanks, being here. Thanks for joining us here. Oh, I'm delighted to you see in the background we have all the pretty pictures of what's going on in Broward County for those of you who want to visit here or you have if you live here and you have people who want to come visit here. So tell me, um, you're president of the Con Convention Visitors Bureau, what does that mean? Well, it means that I guide a staff of 40 professionals who are salespeople. They represent um, our industry, the hospitality industry, in associations and organizations around the country as members of a variety of professional boards. Um, I oversee the sales department, that uh, their responsibility is to go out there and sell the destination last year to 11.1 million visitors. I oversee a service department, which uh, once a convention has agreed to come here, they take over the uh, relationship with the meeting planner to make sure that everything that that convention in t intends to provide to its delegates and attendees gets done sensationally. Um, we oversee the convention center. Uh, the Broward County Convention Center is 600,000 square feet um, of meeting port. and convention and exhibition space. We are conveniently located at Port Everglades. Mm -hmm county-owned facility. Mm -hmm. um, it's operated by um, SMG, a corporation that operates convention centers around the country. And unlike most convention centers, at the direction of the Board of County Commissioners, this building makes a few dollars every year. Um, the building doesn't make the money. The money goes back into um, improvements to the building. And we expanded that building in the year 2000. It went from 300,000 square feet to 600,000 square feet with no debt. Um, paid for cash reserves that um, gave us an opportunity to open that facility and have no debt service to be concerned about. So tell me how the CVV came about. In 1980, after two tries, the people of Broward County agreed to give the Board of County Commissioners the opportunity to impose a bed tax um, paid for by visitors um, or anyone who stays in a hotel, a motel, or even in a condo for less than six months. In fact, if you're leasing a condo, um, uh -oh. Make sure you pay the tax, the sales tax and the tourist development tax, otherwise Broward County will come knocking on your door. Um, but that is that fully funds the operation of the Convention and Visitors Bureau. At first there was no CVB, there was no professional um, staff to do marketing for Broward County. And for a couple of years um, the money just kind of built up. By 1990 the decision was made actually to increase the tax to 3%. It started out at 2%. Wow. Um, the third percent was to build, um, pay the debt service, build, and operate the convention center because we suddenly found out after all those years of college kids that in fact there was a meeting and group business. <laughs> there were other people who wanted to come here besides college kids who were interested in nickel beers. And as you <laughs> <Like> indicated, <me. laughs> stayed 10 to a room in a hotel. Right. Didn't matter if there was air conditioning because right. you mostly climbed in and out of windows. And and, <laughs> and so back in 19... Tell my parents that they watch these. <laughs> I, I was raised in Miami Beach. My parents know I never came to Fort Lauderdale for spring break. Um, but we changed everything about the destination. Everything that we were. And after... And, and used the bed tax to do all of that. Um, there was private investment in the destination and there was public investment. The county um, improved its airport, improved the port, the city of Fort Lauderdale changed parking and uh, traffic patterns around the Fort Lauderdale Beach and over a billion dollars was invested wow. in the destination as a result of this little 3% bed tax. Um, about 11 years ago the Board of County Commissioners added an additional 2% to the bed tax bringing it to 5%. That money was to pay the debt service on um, the Panthers Arena in Sunrise. And so we are a destination that collects 5% bed tax. It generates about $40 million right now. Every year it fluctuates mm -hmm. depending on what the uh, occupancy what, what is. What was it at its highest? When, when, before the this Great Recession? About $8.5 million per percent. Okay. So it was, it was about $42, $43 okay. million. Dollars. Um, we're now back at the $40 million, $40 million plus um, range. Well, did you have a dip? We did had, we have a dip? We had two dips in the 15 years that I've been here. One of them was almost catastrophic, very short-lived, but almost catastrophic, and that was September 12th, 2001. Oh. Um, we had a convention moving into the convention center, and they stayed. None of their delegates could arrive, so they canceled. 
We didn't lose any other convention business in 2011 into 2012, and uh, 2001 and, and 2002, 2002. Um, as a result of September 11th, wow. and were named by Ernst and Young in, two, in 2002 as the fastest recovering um, tourism destination in the country. The reason for that is because people had confidence in travel to a place that they were comfortable with. The number one reason for visit in 2002 was to visit friends and family. People didn't travel just to mm -hmm. go to the beach mm -hmm. and to enjoy the amenities. They came for a purpose. So we had a, a significant dip, and again, it was only five months worth, but we had a significant dip in 2001 into 2002. And then 2008, just like everyone else, every other business in this country, in the, around the world, mm -hmm. um, we felt the ravages of, a, um, of, a, of an economic, some called it a hiccup, some called it a complete, you know, Meltdown. Total <laughs> meltdown. Um, but we have now, this, it, this year, in 2012, we have reached the levels of collections, occupancy, average daily rate, and tourist tax collections that we had in 2008, which was a, an award-winning year for us. And for the first time ever, we hit 11 million visitors in 2011. So we've never had this, that's a record number of visitors? It is a record number of visitors, and on pace right now for 2012 to surpass wow. 2011, we're now projecting about 1.3 million, 11.3 million visitors to Broward County. And why do you think that is in in a in an uh, economic time, which most people are still labeling a recession? Because at some point, and this is what we figured out in 2001, there is a pent up demand. Americans don't like to be withdrawn. They like to share experiences with other people, other countries, and and they they feel like that's their reward for working so hard. They're not getting salary increases. Mm -hmm. Some of them have actually lost their jobs, but they still feel entitled to some reward for their hard work. Travel is the best way to do that. It's, it really, and especially travel to this area, it's affordable, it is convenient. Um, every low fare carrier, as you know, flies into your airport. Mm -hmm. Our um, airport. Our airport, but, but a lot of that direction came not only from the commission, but from you personally when you said, I want the port, the airport and the CVB to work together and to create some marketing strategies, and we did, and it has paid off tremendously. Okay, we're going to take a break. We're okay. going to take a break. Nikki's going to take a breath. <laughs> we'll be right back.